birdies. <laughs> Check these guys out. <laughs> I'm being chased by a herd of chickens. <laughs> hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm. Today we're going to be talking about pastured poultry and this video is going to be a little bit different. I titled this video to catch your eye because we're doing something different than other people are doing. I started out with a conventional chicken tractor like this, but I've learned. We tried some different things this year. I'm going to take you along and show you what we've done. At first, I thought these were just gimmicks. At first I thought what we were doing here was not the right thing, but I'm finding out that my birds are actually utilizing more food, so there's less food waste, they're a better bird, they're a more robust bird, they're actually moving around, they're running, they're walking, they're not the lazy Cornish cross that eats, sits by the feeder and just pecks and eats, they move around, they get sunshine, they're healthy, and they're going to be great for our family. So come along on the farm vlog today as we talk about our meat birds and some great tips for you raising meat birds for your family or for production. All right? Woo! So before you get distracted, it's hot out here and I'm going to be sweating by the end of the video. That's just it. That's just the reality of living out in the country, living on a farm and working on a farm. So I'm going to be wet by the end of this video. This is our mobile PVC chicken tractor and at the end of the video there'll be a link on how we built this and how we use this. This is good enough to house 50 chickens for probably the first five or six weeks of their lives and then it starts getting too crowded for 50 chickens. So what we did this year because it got so crowded was we picked up this shock or not fence from Premier One Fencing. The shock or not fence will shock your birds if they're trying to get out or predators if they're trying to get in but it has a tight mesh at the bottom so when they're baby chicks they won't get into that mesh and they won't get shocked. We don't want to shock our birds and if you know how an electric fence system works there's a solar charger down here and basically it sends a pulse of electricity out. Well, we turn it off during the day and on during the night to keep the predators out. We have had no troubles with predators with this Premier One fencing, which is super duper awesome. So I wanted to get you out here today because we are four days out from processing these birds. Four days out from putting these birds in the freezer. So we'll have an awesome video on how to process meat birds and we learn a little bit about streamlining our operation every year that we do this. This has been the biggest learning year for me when it comes to how to raise these birds. So conventionally, we've been putting feed in the feeders and it's been a dry feed. Let me show you what the feed looks like. So this is our dry feed. It's an organic feed. It's from Reedy Fork Farm. There'll be a coupon code in the video description below. They're a local farm but no matter where you are in the country you can still order organic feed from these guys it's great feed however it's a little bit on the dusty side and I thought to myself one day I was out here and I was filling up the waterers for the chickens two and three times a day meaning 10 to 20 gallons of water these birds were going through per day so I just so happened to dump some water over in the feeder holy cow the birds went nuts for it so they went right down to the feeder and just started gobbling the feed up that was soaked in water versus drinking the water ding 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 a light came on in my head let me show you what we've been doing with our feed and other people are doing this and i thought this was just some crazy hippie tactic to you know show let me show you how we ferment our food Oh my goodness, it actually works. There's less food waste. When you look at the chicken manure, it's actually manure and not chunks of corn and chunks of soybean and chunks of undigested food. What was happening before was we were wasting food. We were putting food in for our chickens and it was just getting pooped right back out. It wasn't breaking down in their digestive system. So what this is doing is pre-digesting the food and releasing sugars. Let me show you. Let me be the first guy to tell you that part of farming is experimenting and part of farming is trying different methods and trying different things and different tools and different ideas and sharing in those different ideas here on YouTube. If you're raising meat birds for profit, you can do this raising meat birds for profit. If you're raising meat birds for your family, just a small amount of meat birds, you can do this raising meat birds for your family. I'm telling you, I'm getting less food waste. I'm utilizing more food. I'm saving money. I'm getting a better bird, a cleaner bird, and a bird that moves around better. 
there, which means in turn that I'm getting a stronger bird, a bird that's healthier, and a bird that's going to have more immune resistance for me when I consume that bird. In other words, when I consume a bird that has good immune resistance, it helps my body with its immune resistance. So what we have here are two buckets of feed. These two buckets had water added to them. One of them was two days ago and one of them was three days ago. I'm going to show you the differences in these buckets. So this is just feed. It's all basically swollen up and you can see that it's all the way to the top of the bucket and this one's almost overflowing. Well these buckets were only filled up about halfway full when we filled them up. So we put half a bucket of feed in and then we filled the bucket to the rim with water and the feed swelled up. The first day it swelled up, the second day it started fermenting. What happens to starches, which is what these feeds are, is basically a starch, a heavy starch, like a potato. Well, we soak them in water, and what happens is those starches start to ferment or they start to sprout, and that causes the release of sugar. Those sugars that are released is what the bird is using to grow. So what we're doing is taking starch and turning it into sugar and saving the birds part of their digestive process. Now as we're saving the birds part of their digestive process, that means as they eat the food, they're actually taking in the moisture that they need. They're drinking less water, which is basically just running right through them. They're actually producing less manure and more feed is going to build bulk, in other words, more feed is going to build meat on these pastured birds. Now, supplementing these pastured birds is the grass here. So what we do is we let our birds, we feed them in the morning and we basically put a five gallon bucket of feed, which equals two of these five gallon buckets. We'll feed them early in the morning and we'll feed them late in the evening. When the sun is shining bright, they're up underneath this shed that we have built for them, the chicken tractor, and when it's cool outside in the morning, they'll gobble down food, and when it's cool outside in the evening, when the shade gets on the land, they'll come out and they'll gobble down more food. We use a couple different types of feeders and waterers, and I'll show you the feeder that we use. This thing is super duper awesome for mobile chicken coops. You can see the birds. They come running when they start seeing this feeder. So we have not fed them yet this morning because we're gonna move them. Whenever we move them, there's a huge drive for these birds to eat. So we'll take the feeder, we'll set it out where we wanna move them, we'll let the birds start to eat, We'll drag the chicken tractor over to where it goes. We'll put the fence around it, and then they'll be set up on a new paddock of grass, and we'll leave them on that paddock of grass for four to six days. In other words, these birds will be processed this Thursday. This will be the last place that they move, unless we want to move them to a fresh patch of grass the day right before we go ahead and process them. Now the reason we'd want to move them to a fresh patch of grass the day before we go process them is because we want to reduce the manure load when we process our birds and you'll get more on that if you watch our pastured poultry processing videos. We've got two videos out now and we'll have a third video coming out for this year's pastured poultry. We're learning every year. There are awesome tips and tricks that we can teach you with raising meat birds for your family and for selling. So. Let's get busy moving the coop. I'm gonna get you a little close up and show you what's going on here. So one of these is fermenting already and that'll be the one that we feed first. We wanna kinda of keep an eye on what we have. I have four buckets going on here. So basically every other day I'm filling buckets. Whenever I dump this out, I'm filling it back full and putting water in it and letting it start to swell up and release those sugars again. Now this is where we're gonna set up our chicken processing area. So I wanna move my birds as close as I possibly can to that chicken processing area area. It's approximately 30 yards from where the birds are now. I want you to watch this and see how food driven these birds are. Also, if you've ever raised Cornish crossbirds, you know these birds are inherently lethargic. They don't run. They don't move. They plop down. They eat. They sit. They don't move. These birds are different. What we're doing here has made them different. It's super awesome. So literally it's taken me about 45 seconds to take up the entire fence. Really neat. I'm gonna lay it out and drop post. So life is all about systems here. I've already picked up my fence. I've laid it out right here and we'll start sticking stakes in the ground once we get the birds up here.
here's what the wet or fermented food looks like. It's like porridge. It's like, I guess, oatmeal or cream of wheat. Much more appetizing, much more enticing for the birds. And as you can see, there are some stragglers down there, but they'll all flock together. You hear me talking to the birds at a very young age. I always talked to the birds. I always said, birdies, whenever I was going to feed them. And now they know when I say birdie, even from the front porch of the house, they all come to me because they think it's feeding time. Look out. Get out, get to the chopper. This is our mobile chicken coop. Pull this guy right up the hill. Give these guys some shade. That's what they're looking for. Okay, so we've got our lightweight mobile coop up here all set up. And let's talk a little bit about work. A lot of people say, man, I just don't say it's so much work it's so hard you know those are the same people that are going to the organic food store and paying 25 dollars a chicken and then going and running on a treadmill against the wall and trying to get exercise when you could be raising your own food and getting exercise and learning instead of running into a wall at the gym what makes more sense to you so here is our food at day one and here is our food at day two and here is our food at day three. You see those bubbles working off? That's what we're looking for. Bubbles, see those bubbles? I think they're camera shy. <laughs> you see them, they're all starting to work their way back towards that mobile coop. They know where the shade is, they know what's up. It's amazing being able to herd pastured poultry like this. Pretty cool. Something else that I think is really cool is you don't have to pour it in a feeder. You can just dump it right out on the ground and the birds will go nuts for it. We'll go around and we'll snug up our fence. Just basically pull it tight, take your foot, stretch it out and pull it tight. I found that when you install this fence that trying to make it a square just puts an undue stress on the fence. So I just make it one big round pin. Just that quick, just that easy, another minute and a half and we're all installed. This fence is super duper cool. And again, we don't have to turn it on during the day because the birds aren't trying to get out. It's more to keep predators from getting in. Now don't overcomplicate this in your head. There's no crazy super duper science to this. We're just wetting the food down. If you put in yesterday's wet food or the day before or the day before, either way, it's not gonna hurt anything. We're just wetting the food down. The longer you can wait, if you can hit that three day mark, you'll get more sugars, more starches will break down into sugars. It'll start to ferment and it'll be better for your birds. So if you can work out a little system and keep track of it, it'll be better. Hope you guys have learned a lot and enjoyed this insight into what we've learned this year raising our meat birds. Thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge. Please pound that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and we'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. All right. Come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your wife.